Now, how do we build trust? Well, you don't just talk about the Lambos. You don't just talk about like, hey, um, I live in Puerto Rico. I'm not paying any taxes. You know, like, I mean, you don't go on YouTube and start broadcasting that to the world. I think that there's an image problem. You know, there's an image problem. Well, on that, like one thing that <clears> – so did you did – you, are you aware of the like the Texas Blockchain Council Summit? Yes. Did you go last year? I did not go last year. I just became a member. Okay. So prior to last year's summit, um, I had just started working with the, the Blockchain Council. Um, I had just started getting into the crypto Bitcoin world. But my journey when it comes to crypto was um, basically I'll back up a couple steps. For me, it was when uh, the most successful people I knew – we're all going into crypto, all yeah. going into Bitcoin, and you know they're making all this money. And then I'm looking at it going, well, Bitcoin doesn't make sense to me because, and again, I'm, this is a year and a half ago, but back then it was like, okay, because if Bitcoin goes up 10%, yeah, you may make $100,000 or mm -hmm. whatever you're making. I make a dollar or two. So what? Right. So I need one of these to the moon type things, mm -hmm. and I was one of those guys that were like, well, maybe put a hundred dollars here, a hundred dollars here, a hundred dollars <laughs> there. And another guy, a friend of mine, he made like fifty thousand dollars on on a on a Dogecoin run. I was like, oh, maybe I'll join in that. And what? It, fast forward my journey, it was just like I should just invest in Bitcoin for me for, from an investment standpoint. Yeah, I understand there's projects, and we'll get into that in a second. But like, but Anyway, so that's my journey with crypto. But prior to the summit, the only experience I have with Bitcoin is idiots on Twitch or YouTube or Facebook mm -hmm. who used to be. I'm thinking of one specific person. I won't. I won't name him, but he was a big real estate guru type, and then he was a Bitcoin guru type, and all he would talk about was about. Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, and this is like 2019-ish, I think. Mm -hmm. So it was still, it still wasn't like huge, huge. I mean, obviously it was huge, but not like, it wasn't so much in the ether. It was almost like a joke in the pu public. Right. And so that's my preconceived notion about the crypto Bitcoin peoples. Yes. So then mm -hmm. you see this giant Bitcoin event in, in Miami, and everybody's <laughs> in their sandals and backward hats. And I'm like, oh, it looks like a hacker convention or something. So going in full circle to the summit last year, I thought that's what that was going to be. But you get there, and it's politicians, it's suits, it's companies. Um, it's, oh, yeah, there's all these other projects. And, and crypto and, and all these, these technologies are not just about financial devices. They're, they're trying to solve real-world problems. And yes. to me, it opened up a giant um, window to – Oh, this is why blockchain can change the world. Not because of transactions, but because of record keeping and the ledger side. Exactly. Exactly. You know? And that's and that's what I think keeps people in um even in a in in development at least or looking at um trying to move forward projects in a bear market is that there's just this belief that you know, um, all your life, if you've been looking for something that is transparent and that cannot be corrupted, um, then why not Bitcoin? You know, and oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, going back to the trust <laughs> factor is I'm, I will freely recognize that there's a certain population that would look at like the Bitcoin Miami event and have more trust in that because people are in shorts and shirts and t-shirts and there's a segment of population that would look at the summit where you see people in suits and business attire yeah. that would have more trust in that and so i will freely admit that you shouldn't trust anybody based off clothing no but <laughs> but you know it it just seems like there's a little bit more validity when you <laughs> have like I'm, I'm about to say something and hear myself realize how stupid it sounds as i say it but it just seems like there's more validity when you actually have power centers involved, like the p politicians and whatnot. 